So hey guys, today on the bench we have this Milwaukee Fuel 2 inch die grinder, catalog number 2784-20. And before we get into this, the, the first thing I want to say is we're at 10,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all you guys do. You guys rock. Thanks for all the links that you click on in the description and the things that you do to help support the channel. The overwhelmingly positive comments you make. Sometimes you share your story, what yours is going through. You ask questions. The community responds. Sometimes they answer. It's just an awesome, awesome feeling. Still a very small channel, but just overwhelming for this country boy. For this many people like to watch stuff getting fixed on the bench. So, so just thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. And God bless. So this Milwaukee Fuel die grinder belongs to a friend of mine. And <laughs> he had just got it. And the problem with this one, no matter what battery I put in it, by the way, I did more than one. See if you can hear this on camera here. That made a real bad sound. And it doesn't smell very good, so. This is not going to be a repair, but I can tell you we are going to look inside to see what's going on with this thing. So it looks like these are going to be T20 Torx, not security. Definitely have to push on this. That feels smooth too, though. Let's keep going. This one here is going to be a T10. That's odd. But it is. Okay, so. The... And there's our rotor. Definitely is some powder in there. And there's our look inside the brushless motor and the paddle switch with the diode, like a flyback diode. We do have a speed control and a battery connector. Pretty impressive build, really. Most of you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of TTI, but Milwaukee is actually one of my favorite tools. Um, TTI does make, you know, Ryobi as well as Milwaukee, but some some things this Ryobi is is not bad either, really. Look at those MOSFETs. I've got to say that might be the first time I've ever seen acre nuts be used to fasten down MOSFETs to a heat sink. The negative was just run up, I guess, just to make a good connection with the, the metal housing of the die grinder, the shaft of it. Definitely a potted speed control. And I hate to say it, even your battery connectors done got difficult to work on here. A lot of silicone potting and ribbon cables. Two, two ribbon cables coming out of your connector board. Great. Just great. These bearings actually feel really, really good. I'm getting some powder off of here like 
the stator and rotor may have been touching there. We do have a cooling fan, but it don't seem to be rubbing anything. I mean, that is impressively smooth. I don't know if you can see this or not, but if you look just beyond your haul board back there for, for our haul sensor feedback, you'll see some crud. Hopefully we focused in here. You can definitely see some crud here. And there's a wire of some type right there. Definitely magnetic. And this is cast aluminum, so. I thought it might have been left over from this machining process, but let's see what this right here yields, a clean, clean tissue. So I don't know if maybe this um, part didn't get cleaned at the factory and got assembled. That's definitely just assumption because this also could have been from the sound that we heard. They could have been making this iron dust itself here. You know what? The more and more we clean and look this back here. Hopefully you can see that on camera on the pole right here of the stator. You can actually see where the plastic behind all your laminations on the pole is actually smeared and melted. The rotor was absolutely touching back there. Interesting. So these little metal pieces that look like hair, I believe actually came off of here. We can see some plastic on here as well. And now a stator and rotor does have a very minimal clearance. And, and that's on every uh, motor design, especially BLDCs so, and little servos. So it's not that uncommon for one to be close in tolerance as far as clearance, but what we have here for bearing support is plastic. So you would think that would be good enough though. Just give you another uh, once over look here and I'm actually going to just put this back together and uh, I have to clean everything up and just testing it out again.
I guess it was just touching. Just in case you wonder what the, the couple looked like, I figure I would do the little look inside of it there. Almost like a little Lovejoy coupling, if you know what I mean. And it has a notch or a key here. So we line our coupler up. And it goes into a little slot here. Just hold this tight. I mean, that sounds fine with nothing rubbing in there. Cut out goes here. Definitely rubbing again. <laughs> Definitely something still rubbing. And you know what? Is it coincidence? I figured they actually would have made this. And, and they, well, they actually did. They, they actually did. They, they recessed that. I just wanted it was coincidence that it's rubbing and the same spot that will be tilted with, with the washer on this corner. And I know this is a ring terminal. I'm just saying it's acting kind of as a washer unless, you know what, they, they thought ahead and they absolutely made a spot for a ring here. And then they went and put a larger ring on. And to be fair, I've taken this one apart and I did not pay attention. Maybe, maybe that was pushed in there good, so... Maybe that's not an issue when everything's together correctly. <clears throat> but it is weird that if it picked up on this corner, it would kick. It would definitely kick your rotor into your stator on that exact corner, of course, where we are rubbing at. <clears throat> Whether coincidence or not, I am not sure. Tried to fold that ring down some. Definitely has a lot to do with <laughs> how the face of this is tightened up. That is for sure. Of course, and we don't get it tight enough. It ain't making to the feedback, the hall feedback device. Almost sounds like gears grinding, but it's no gears in it. That's just a speed control messing up. We got to get it snug. What I've done here is flip this around, just trying different spots around 90 degrees at a time. Not still hitting, but it still has a high pitch sound. So, so one thing that I have done here to try is I've just taken a little shim from a nickel strip and super glued it onto the bearing housing in the same place that we're rubbing here. It's gonna help keep that bearing up as well. This way as we try to get this alignment correct. And we'll see how that goes when we put it back together. So let's see how that does with the shim in it. And these tightened up as even as we can get it. I say that's how it's supposed to sound. So yeah, I mean, a really nice die grinder, and I'm definitely a Milwaukee fan. Um, like I say, I've said some bad things about TTI design in the, in the past, especially like Robbie 40 volt stuff, but that's just my opinion after working on a good bit of it, and they got me in the past a little bit on. But Milwaukee stuff, I mean, I've, I've had no trouble, especially with their fuel stuff, and this could just be a one-off, so... You can't never go by just one thing going through QC and not making it through right, but there definitely seemed to be something here with the alignment and the way that you just had your plastic part of the housing for your bearing retainer and also on the front, the way this 
all this lines up together and something's just going on with the alignment there. I like a lot of brushless stuff that, um, that has your BODC all in one package you can reuse or actually take out and troubleshoot, run it with another BODC controller. This on the other hand, and most tools really, it's, it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be all put together with the, the tool housing being part of the motor housing and for making more compact as well as, you know, saving money, of course. But hope you like this look inside of this Milwaukee Fuel die grinder today. Not a lot of information, but just showing the internals and just showing this one having issues and just thought we'd share that with you. So if you liked the video today, please like, share, subscribe. And as always, I'll have some links down in the video description of some of the tools and interesting items that I find helpful on my workbench. Any of those that you find interesting that you'd like to click on does support the channel and it's greatly appreciated. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.